Welcome to this edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI of the Americas. I'm Wade Kaler, Executive Director. On Tap with me today is an old friend of mine, as well as a longtime FCSI member. But not only is he a food service consultant, he's a podcast pro, he's a television pro, he's an award winner when he was younger, from his, and probably the most active FCSI social media person that we actually have. From SSA Design and Consultant Studios in San Jose, California, Mr. Bill Bender. Welcome, Bill. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to be here, Wade. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, it's you're Mr. FCSI, and I don't even pay you for it. It's fantastic. <laughs> we love FCSI. To get started, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get started in the food service consulting business? Okay. And, and kind of what's your specialty in this? Because you've got some niches that you work in. Right. Well, wait, thank you very much for the invitation today, because it's, it's just a pleasure to be with you. Um, my parents thought it would be a good idea when I was 12 years old to buy a Colonial Inn in Western Massachusetts. Now, we lived in Washington, D.C. area, the suburbs in uh, Virginia and Maryland and that area for most of my uh, life. And they thought it would be a good idea to buy a Colonial Inn. They had never <laughs> owned an inn or anything like that. So we moved from Washington, D.C. suburbs to South Egremont, Massachusetts, that has an, a population at the time of about 800 people. The whole so metropolis. That, that was a, quite a transition <laughs> from Washington, D.C. to that. And, you know, the next thing I knew after we got the inn ready, it was a historical inn, a colonial inn. And all of a sudden we had uh, about eight acres, I think. And all of a sudden, a, a man pulls up after we got our, our brand up and our name there. And I was, you know, just roughly 13, 12, 13 years old. A man pulled up in the parking lot, Wade. And what he did was he parked and he was a really old guy because I was 12 or 13. And he was like 40. <laughs> <laughs> An old man. Exactly. So, I saw him pulling a couple suitcases out of his car and trying to check in. And I grabbed him and I took him into the to the uh, building in our inn. And I took him up to his room after he checked in and he gave me 50 cents. Ooh. Now, in 1967, Wade, 50 cents was sweet money because remember back then, it didn't take 10 or 15 dollars to go to a movie. It took about right. a buck. Right. <laughs> so... At that time, I started learning about taking action, providing hospitality, getting the work ethic really from my mother and father who were the innkeepers. So we had a dining room of about 45, 50 seats. We sort of, you know, at the time it was your room for $12.95 or $14.95 or $16.95, depending on what room you had. And you got breakfast with that, you know, in an inn. Wow. Well, Guess what? We had to have the dining room ready. We had to have the place clean. We had chambermaids that would make the beds and clean the rooms and do all the heavy stuff. But every once in a while, you're making beds or cleaning or you're taking care of the grounds. We had a pool that all of a sudden it was my responsibility to take and shoveling snow, of course, in the winter. So <laughs> all, all of these type of things gave me the work ethic that I got from my parents. So we had that in for about four years, uh, about three and a half, four years. And then we moved back to Maryland in 1970. Um, and that's when I was really lucky to meet with some of these people like Mr. Norman Brinker back here, Carl Hayes, and a, a bunch of other industry heavyweights. And I joined a, a great company at a, at a very young age when I was 16. So that's, that's an amazing story, especially it, it's amazing to me, especially that so many people get into this industry because of family. Right. What, what, different angles and the different ways they come in, but it's it's usually a family thing that gets us into the hospitality industry. Um, and then, as we all know, you can't get out of it once you're in it. So uh, and at least living in the Northeast, being the proverbial pool boy, it wasn't <laughs> going to be a very long season. Well, so was, you only had to do that for right. about was, a month. It was three months, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you're exposed to that work ethic where things had to be done, you know, yeah. your parents are saying, hey, we need help here. We need this. And yeah. No, there weren't child labor laws like there are. Right. Exactly. <laughs> My parents exactly. would have been arrested if it was today. You know, so. <laughs> 
But my sister even was two years younger than myself, my sister Joan, and she even helped out. So she was working. And of course, we're going to school while these things happen. But it's a work ethic that came in my genes, really on the hospitality side. Helen Bender, my mom, is is really the one that taught me how to serve people and take care of guests and, and provide service weight. So, so today working with SSA and, and your, uh, your consultant yourself, but right. for like I said, number of years, tell me about like what your services are that you specialize in. Right. Well, with my long background, you know, I was in operations for over 25 years and I've been on the corporate side and have been involved in an IPO with a multi-unit fast casual startup in the 90s, a Monterey Pasta Company. You get exposed to quite a bit, but you have a lot of learnings along the way, Wade. So mm-hmm. what my specialty area is, is management advisory services. SSA is really just a premier provider of design and consulting services, you know, with Ken Schwartz and our our entire team there in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And these people are so awesome from the design, building, planning, culinary, equipment side. And what they do, Wade, is really amazing. I am on the West Coast and handle management advisory services. Now, people say, well, what's management advisory services? Right. Well, MAS has a lot to do with all of the people side of the business, the service side of the business, the organizational side of the business, how we provide service to our guests. And mm-hmm. let's talk about that for a second, because providing service and hospitality, it takes a lot of different things to make right. that happen. And when you look at you know, how our industry is portrayed in the media, whether it's articles or whether it's TV shows or any type of social media you see nowadays, or particularly movies, it's cringeworthy half the mm-hmm. time, Wade. Mm-hmm. And when you've worked in it as long as I have, or as long as Ken Schwartz has, or you know, Howard Sanford, and uh, you know, we've all been in this for such a long time. Right. And when you see people in the industry that get all this exposure or only things in movies or TV that are just not professional, we all just want to die. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what we really do is work on being professionals for our clients and then also for what's best for the client that we have, but also the industry, how we provide those services to the public and establishing a brand, growing a brand takes a lot of resources. So you right. have to have the resources set up to be able to deliver things. Now, everybody says, well, what's more important, the, you know, the employee or the customer? Well, it's undoubtedly the team members you have because they're right. the one providing the service yep. to that. So I work in a lot of areas of training, teaching people, because most young people do not have the training necessary to be successful in the industry. And, you know, Wade, I don't know if you know it, but I'm on the board of the California Restaurant Foundation out here. Mm-hmm. And we do a lot of work with schools around the state. We have about, you know, this year we have the COVID problem. So it's everything's tapered off with what schools are working. But we right. have roughly 120 schools in California, probably more by now, that are working on the Pro Start program. Right. And the California Restaurant Foundation delivers that throughout the state to schools that want to set up um the Pro Start program, and that's a two-year curriculum, Wade, that nice. helps the industry teach management and culinary side. So all that, bringing these students up and attracting them to the industry is one of my real passions, and many people in, in the uh, state uh, foundation work on that. But nice. back, to the, back to the MAS is, you know, how do you provide that better service than your competitors? Yep. How do you take care of your team members that you have? How do you develop a menu? Do you have your cost controls in place? Do you have marketing, the proper marketing? So those are all management advisory services, but it really gets back to how do we teach, train, hire, attract, recruit, and onboard team members to be successful with our brands that we work with. Right, because they are an extension of us when you're the owner. Absolutely. You're not there, work, you're not the one that's doing the hosting, you're not the one waiting the tables, you're not the one cooking the food every time. That's so right. therefore, every time they're out there in, in, in connection with that customer, they are you. And that that's, is, they represent hard. your brand. It's hard, to, it's hard to teach, I agree. Yeah. It is. What, what is something about Bill Bender, one thing maybe that we would not know about you? What's a secret or a little quirk or some kind of fun fact that we wouldn't know? Well, you know, I think I, I really love 
to say before you start consulting with anybody, make sure you walk in their shoes because you see a lot of operators out yeah. there now saying, I'm having trouble with this or trouble with that. So a lot of times before I meet with a client lead, I like to visit their location, don't announce myself, and I'll just walk through and see what the guest experience is like. So a lot of times over the last 20, 25 years that I've been in consulting, almost 30 years now, I like to just check out operations. You know, it's, it's kind of a passion, but it's also kind of a hobby because you like to see how right. the serve points are delivered. So a lot of times it's been researching. And of course, nowadays, what we're not able to get out as often, I'm doing a lot of research online. So I'm, I'm really a fan of, um, you know, doing the research up front and developing the information that can help you provide, you know, great services for the clients. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, What's one piece of advice or what's, you know, you do a lot of research and and I've known you for a long time and, and, and I know you get out there quite a bit. What's the one thing that, that you probably see the most of when you go into a restaurant? Well, mistake wise, I mean, say it again, mistake wise, like what's the one thing you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the biggest mistake I think is, Management ownership don't pay enough attention to their team members. Yeah. They're not developing their team members. Yeah. So we have to have owners, management teams, shift leaders, whatever you want to call them, assistant managers, whoever it is, they have to mentor team members yeah. and help them teach them the industry and raise their performance level because we have to have a team that is at a high level of performance nowadays. Right. We know we're a difficult industry. Well, guess <laughs> what? We're, we're going to give you long hours. We're not going to give you breaks all the time. And then we're going to make it really busy. And then we're going to see how you do if you survive. Yeah, How's exactly. That? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so it, we have, you know, I've gone for a number of clients over the years where you've gone in and you see broken equipment or the facilities are not maintained. Mm -hmm. And Ken and Howard and Kyle and David at SSA, we say, well, how, how was the operation at that airport? And I said, well, we could spend a billion dollars and not fix it. (laughs) So so you go back to it, Wade, and it's like, how can we have a broken piece of equipment sitting in any type of facility and have it not repaired within 24 hours? It's it's insane to me. I completely agree. Speaking of SSA and all the guys you mentioned, right. you know, you you know, you were on your own for quite a few years, and a few years ago, you ended up joining forces with SSA. How right. did that change for you personally, going from owner to employee or partner? Well, I, I still can get my own clients and and have WH Benner and Associates, but okay. when you have the structure that Ken and I worked out, Ken is such a great industry leader and great a person that likes to collaborate with people. Mm -hmm. So what we had talked about, and this is one of the real values of FCSI, we had met when I was on the Council of uh, Professional Standards chairing that a few years ago, as you know, Wade. Yep. But what we had was a couple of our annual meetings that I went to, and I went to the conferences, and, you know, I would present at a couple of conferences, and I'd see Mm -hmm. Ken presenting, and then I was on the council, and it was like, I got to get to know this guy because I'd heard about him, but I hadn't (laughs) heard of him. So I was so impressed by his speaking skills and his presentation. And he came up to me afterwards and said, yeah, hey, how do you think I did? And I told him, I said, you were fantastic, man. So we started a relationship that developed over the next few years. And about three and a half, four years ago, we started talking further. And he said, you know, I'm in the East Coast in Tampa. Where are you based, Bill? And I said, well, I'm in, I'm in Silicon Valley, San Jose. And he says, you know, we've got clients out there. Is there any way that we could work together where you could help us if we need help in that area? And I said, absolutely. So we worked out a deal where I can, you know, be, I'm a VP of management for uh, right. SSA and represent him. And I handle things that he needs me to handle when they can't yeah. get there. Because remember, when you're on the yep. East Coast and you got to get to the West Coast, that's a day. Yep. Then you got to stay working with a client and you got to spend a day going back. So if we can be more efficient and, you know, with Ken's great atmosphere that he has and the great team members that we have, he is able to really uh, just make it really fun to work with. And he likes to have everybody collaborate on projects together, which is really helps the creativity, but also the solutions and expertise that we can all share together whenever they need it. If they have a problem with management, they call me up and I give them my two cents. 
Perfect. I also come across design problems for clients and I say, well, look, let me make a phone call on that. I'll get back to you <laughs> on that piece of equipment. And of course, I'm dealing with the top firm in the, in the nation that can recommend any solution, I think, which is right. really exciting, uh, Wade. I completely agree. They're, they're, I mean, I know they're a class act. I, I've known them for a long time. I've interviewed Ken. I've I've had him on the board of trustees. Right. And, and, and and I I have a lot of respect for everybody, uh, but they do. They are a special group down in, in Tampa and they definitely do things their own way that's for sure and sure. and and it's it's uh it's pretty remarkable to watch them work well that's all the questions i've got for you today uh, but before i let you go bill i i, I kind of like to end things on kind of a, a light-hearted note so i've got a few questions based on the would you rather game and so I've, i'm going to run through these and we'll just figure out what kind of personality bill bender is based on your answers so to start off with would you rather be covered in snakes or covered in bees Bees. Bees. Be, would you rather be able to sing or be able to dance? Sing. Would you rather own a restaurant or own a dollar store? A restaurant. Would you rather give up TV for a year or give up internet for a year? TV, definitely. Would you rather be able to teleport anywhere or be able to read minds? I think uh, read minds. Read minds. Would you rather have all traffic lights you approach turn green or never have to stand in line again? Never have to stay in the line again. <laughs> I, I agree. That's a very popular answer. Would you rather see your future or fix your past? See your future. Have unlimited first class plane tickets or never have to pay for food and restaurants again? First class plane tickets. Would you rather only be able to use a fork and no spoon or use a spoon and no fork for the rest of your life? Spoon, I would take because that can get the ice cream. There you go. Great answer. I love that. Would you rather be an unknown superhero or a famous villain? Unknown superhero. Okay. And last but not least, would you rather fight a duck the size of a horse or a hundred horses the size of ducks? I'll go with the horses. The horses. Perfect. That's all I've got for you today. And there you go. <laughs> This is where we started at Steak and Ale. It all starts there, right? Nice. Very nice. Well, tell me, Bill, how can people find out more about you? Well, you can contact our new website at SSA or FSStudio.com. Okay. Or my website is WHBender.com. And both websites have contact information. So okay. I'm also listed as a professional member at FCSI.org, I believe, Wayne. Yes, you are. I, I know that for a fact. Well, Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. As, as always, it's great to see and talk to you. Um, again, I, I appreciate all the work you've done for FCSI over the years. You've been a, a tremendous uh, person that promotes the society um, as well as give plenty of volunteer hours so I, again thanks for joining us today and uh, you, I wish you all the best that wraps up another edition of On Tap with FCSI uh, if you enjoyed today's episode please make sure to help us spread the word like and share our uh, and subscribe to this channel check back next week when we talk to our next FCSI consultant member and until then cheers cheers